Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to Mass Memorial Christian Methodist Church morning worship service. This is the call to worship. The Lord is in this holy temple. Let all the earth keep silent before him. Our hymn of praise is found on page 135 in your pew hymnal. Stand if you can. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. We will do verses 1, 3, and 4. Verses 1, 3, and 4. Amazing grace, 135. Third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and 
and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. At this time, we'll have prayer by our sister Griffin. Good morning, church. Let's pray. Let's prepare our hearts to pray. Dear Father God, we need to hear from you. Yes, Lord. We need a word from you. Yes, Lord. Because if we don't hear from you, what will we do? Thank you, Lord. Dear Lord God, we thank you that you are Father and you are always good. You're a good, good Father. We thank you, Lord God, that as we confess our sins, you are faithful and you are just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we come as the body of Christ, standing because of Jesus Christ's righteousness. And we just come, Lord God, asking for your presence, Lord God, in this service, Lord God, but in our day-to-day lives, Lord God. We need you. Yes, Lord. So, Lord God, we just come, Lord God, thanking you for being God, and beside you there's none other. We thank you that you are Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. We thank you, Lord God, that all that we need you provide. So you are God most high, you are Father, you are provider, you are our peace, you are Shalom. You, and that means even in the midst of storms, you're our peace. We thank you, Lord God, that you are our banner. Yes, we thank you, Lord God, that you are our healer, Lord God, and we do understand that the ultimate healing is to be with you. And so, Lord God, we just come, Lord God, asking for your presence in this service, Lord God, that we give you glory, Lord God, and we do things your, do your will, your way for your glory. Yes, Lord. So we bless you, Lord God, today. And we do say hallelujah. And we do say glory to God. And we do say thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God. You have been so good to us. And even I remember in, in your word with the disciples, you know, Jesus asked whether asked the apostles were they going to turn from you. And, and they said, where can we turn? Because you have the words of life. So, Lord God, even when we don't understand, you have the words of life. And so, Lord God, we're, we're clinging to you. And we're holding on to your unchanging hand. Yes, Lord. Because life is full of transitions, but you are the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we bless you, and we worship you, and we bless thank you. Lord. We say hallelujah. So, Lord God, we do come, Lord God, praying um, for Rance's family. Yes, God. For his mother, Chauncey. Yes, Lord. His brother, Stalin. Yes, his other siblings yes. and his extended family yes. and also for this church family because he was ours yes. and Lord God we're going to miss him but we know you love him so yes, and so Lord God we just ask for the support that we be the support that um, we need to be for the family yes. Lord God and that we just praise you through it all just like we've learned to trust in you Lord God even when we don't understand, we learn to trust in you. Yes, Lord. And so, Lord God, we just, that's why we're here today, to worship. We're here. That's why we're here today, Lord God. Yes, Lord. The burdens, leave the burdens here, yes, Lord God, because your yoke is easy and yes, your burden is light. That's why we're here today. Yes, Lord. To give you praise. Yes, Lord. To bless you, Lord God. And then, Lord God, yes, Lord. as we are encouraged, as we are fortified, Lord yes, Lord. God, that we can go out and tell, truly tell, Young people and older people, yes, our Lord. colleagues, our neighbors, even the strangers, what must they do to yes, be Lord. saved? Yes, Lord. So that's our prayer today, Lord God. We pray for the condition of the world because there's wars and rumors of wars and um, there, there looks like a lack of peace and we pray for peace in Israel, but we pray for peace all over the world. Yes, Lord. We pray for peace in our communities, Lord God, that are dealing with gun violence. We pray, we believe in the power of prayer, and it has not changed that we still believe in the power of yes. prayer. Yes. So we bless you. So as we worship you today, yes. that we
we might decrease and you might increase. That the word of God for the man of God might touch our hearts, Lord God. Touch his heart, Lord God. And that we truly just grow stronger in you. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name.
let go. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. God bless you today. It is good to see everyone in the house of the Lord this morning. This is the day the Lord has made. We rejoice and we are glad in it. In fact, the scripture says in everything, we are to rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. We thank the Lord uh, for the wonderful Church of Mass Memorial who embraced the Collins family on last week uh, when we heard of the passing of Rams. Uh, we um, want to again keep the family in our prayers. And uh, it's, going to, it's going to be difficult for each of us, uh, but uh, we will get through it because the scripture says, Yea, though I walk, what? Through the valley of the shadow of death. You, you don't walk around the valley. I don't, I don't want nothing to do with the valley. No, you, you walk through the valley. You don't walk away from the valley. If you don't, you don't approach, you, you say, I'm not going to go through the valley. No, you, the, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear. I will fear no evil. And so um, we thank God for his presence and uh, his comforting presence with the family. Amen. And not only his comforting presence with the family, but his comforting presence for the members of Mass Memorial. Amen. We have shed tears. Amen. Yeah. We have cried. Yeah. We have asked God why. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm just going to figure out how I'm going to get through this service. But God is good. We still serve an awesome and a mighty God. Yes. Uh, there will be a memorial service for Rams on Saturday, May the 4th at 12 o'clock. It will be a memorial service, uh, and we are expected to uh, feed the family. Amen? Amen. Uh, good to have Sister Michelle here with us. I saw you over there smiling. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Good to have you, Sister Michelle. And uh, we, we hope to see you more often. Amen. 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 And we thank uh, each and every one for being here, Dr. Robinson and First Lady Robinson and, and the Robinson uh, Christian Methodist Episcopal Church <laughs> with us on this morning. So God bless you. Amen. 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 All right, we're going to have another selection, and then we're going to get right into the message. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Uh, and God bless you.
fictional nor is it a fairy tale uh-huh. it's real life it's reality as believers in Christ my brothers and sisters we are not exempt from the problems of this life in fact no Christian is exempt from tragedy or trouble just like those in the world we are also subject to accidents sickness and even death. I remember the first coronavirus victim was a Christian doctor from China, known as a whistleblower who alerted the Chinese authorities about the coronavirus. Yes, Christians die from automobile accidents, plane crashes, accidental drowning, sicknesses, even cancer. On our pilgrimage of Christ, we are not exempt from the problems and tragedy and troubles of life. As Christians, there are times that we have to face death, death of a sibling, uh, a child. Uh, Let's just deal with the reality that bad things happen to good people. No matter how many of us try to deny it, that will not change the reality of it. Bad things happen to good people. And the Bible tells us 
that Job was a good man. Uh, that he had, but he was found sitting on an ash heap, his body covered with boils. He had lost his children. He had lost his possessions. He had lost his health. He had lost everything. And Job wanted to know why, why hadn't, hadn't he served God faithfully? Listen to him in Job 12, 4 and 6. I am as one mocked of his neighbor who called upon God and he answered him. He answered him. The just, the upright man is laughed to scorn while the tabernacle of robbers prosper. And one of the last questions Jesus asked before he breathed his last breath on Calvary. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? We can understand when some vile, corrupt, evil person suffers in this life. We say that's karma, good. We can comprehend uh, the justice of a dictator or an oppressor or a serial killer or an active shooter or someone that takes the life of another. We, we know why bad things happen to bad people, but why do bad things happen to good people? We question God, don't we? God. You have all power in heaven and on earth. Why do you allow these atrocities to happen to good people? Lord, we cannot understand this. Lord, we cannot comprehend this. And this does not make sense. And we have to put together all kinds of rationalizations and Heavenly Father, we still cannot conceive why bad things have to happen to good people. Why, Lord, why, why? Uh, is it because that we live in a fallen world of sin? Maybe, perhaps, but not always. Sometimes people who live godly lives suffer bad things happening to them. The blind man in our text was apparently such a man. He lived in complete darkness from the day he was born. The disciples asked Jesus, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was, he was born blind like this? Jesus sought them with his blunt reply. Neither did this man nor his parents sin. Why bad things happen to good people is a philosophical and a complex question. And it has been a question that philosophers, theologians, and individuals have pondered throughout all human history. And no one has yet figured it out. But I declare this morning, I have a Bible. I have a Bible. And, and first of all, we must consider what God has promised to us in his word. Amen. We must ask the Holy Spirit to help us in our understanding of this question. Because we see through a glass darkly. Why bad things happen to good people. Today, the media and the prosperity gospel preachers try to outdo each other in their efforts to promise more and more things to people. Do this and God will prosper you. Do that. Buy my holy water from the river of Jordan in Israel and sprinkle it and God will heal you. Send your tithes and offerings to me and you will be rich by thirsty. The gospel is not pie in the sky religion. You will not find a single scripture in the word of God that promises you and I that if we follow God, that we will never have problems. 
Jesus said, in this world, you will have tribulation. You will not find a scripture to support that if you go to church faithfully, sickness will never visit your family. Or if you love the Lord and honor him in all of your business dealings, you will always prosper. That's not faith. That's fantasy. Jesus never made any promises as it relates to spot pie in the sky religion. But this is what he did promise. He said, follow me. I send you out as sheep among wolves. You will have trouble. You will have tribulation. You will suffer division even in your family. You will have to take up your cross daily and follow me is the servant greater than his master? What a question. What a question. The Roman executioners drove nails into his hands and his feet. They plucked out his beard. They shoved a, a crown of thorns on his brow. They opened his side with a spear. They beat his face into an unrecognizable mass. He suffered as no man has ever suffered. And no one can tell me that Jesus had no faith because he suffered. No one can tell me Jesus' suffering was because he sinned. No, Jesus suffered not because of sin. He suffered because of our sin. Jesus did not suffer death on the cross just so that you and I could add another car in our garage or another boat in our backyard or so, so that we just sail through life without a headache or an ingrown toenail. He died so that my brothers and sisters we could make it safely from this life to eternity. That place where there will never be no more pain and no more death. Amen. He became sin for us who knew no sin. Amen. Not this world, but that we might have access to the world to come. We've heard the name and claim it theology. The reason why bad things happen is because you didn't confess it. And you've been confessing the wrong thing. My wife and I, we attended a church like this. And this heretical teaching has made people millionaires and billionaires. But it doesn't matter how much money you made preaching false religion. If it's not true, it's not true. A lie is a lie. If it looks like a duck, walks like a duck, quacks like a duck, then it just may be a duck. A lie is a lie, no matter how much money you've made out of that lie. I don't deny that sin causes trouble, but, but not all trouble is caused by sin. So don't beat yourself up. Sin will bring suffering to some, but not all suffering is due to sin. You can say that all German shepherds are dogs, and that would be true, but you cannot say that all dogs are German shepherds. Yes, you can say that all sin brings suffering, but you cannot say that all suffering is a result of sin. And neither can you say that God brings suffering upon us because of sin. You must understand this solid, absolute reality of theology. God is a good God. There is a permissive will that molds the clay into the vessels of honor for his glory. That shaping is something painful. We prefer another design contrary to the potter's plan. But the potter will have it his way. He knows what's best. 
He is the potter. We are the clay. And some of the moldings that we might prefer may be sinful. But God does not want sin in his children or his chosen vessels. So he continues to shape us day by day, hour by hour, minute by minute, moment by moment. And in that shaping, God allows things to happen that we truly wish would not happen at all. They are not pleasant. They hurt. So we learn that suffering and difficulties can have a great purpose. There's opportunity to learn, to grow. God wants us to grow spiritually. And we cannot grow without resistance. We cannot grow without discipline, without some regiment. We will not build spiritual muscle without the inconvenience and the pain of pushing that muscle to its very limit. Was Job a great man before his trouble? Yes. But God knew that he could be even greater. So God pushed Job out of his comfort zone. He would have just been as content to stay where he was. He may have even felt that he had arrived. He conquered his particular world. But God knew differently. So God allowed the patriarch to go through the losses, the pain, the heartache. It all came down to one thing my brothers and my sisters, and it all comes down to one thing today. You're going, are you going to trust God or not? Are we going to trust God or not? Will you trust, as Elder Harris said the other week, will you trust the process? He, is, he has us in a, we're in the process. Will you trust him with this earthly existence. We say trust God. I trust God, but I ask the question again, do you really trust God with the 80 plus years he has promised you in scripture? Will you allow God to push you to your limits? Will you allow God to shape and mold you according to his will and his good pleasure? Even if it takes a pain loss along the way. The fact that today you and I are experiencing uh, difficult times right now in our church, maybe in your personal life, not necessarily an indication that we have sinned or even uh, that we have no faith. The contrary, quite the contrary, it may be God exalting us taking us to another level in our Christian experience, in our Christian walk. It may be that God is doing something so profound within us, within Sister Chauncey, within our church family, within her family, that we, we, we cannot quite understand just yet at this very moment. God may be preparing you and I for a final exam. And this is homework time. No, it, it, it really isn't pleasant. It, it doesn't feel good. You would rather be out somewhere playing basketball or watching television. But God wants you hitting the books of life. He has your nose stuck in those pages, much to your displeasure. You see other Christian friends prospering. Nothing like, they're not going through what I'm going through. They're not going through what we're going through. You see other Christians enjoying their abundant life in Christ and their closets 
and garages are full with Earth's toys. But you cannot seem to get ahead. Everything you touch seems to go sour. There is sickness in your home. Your bills are mounting and you don't have a short answer on how to pay them. You are a good person and bad things are happening to you this very moment. Let me encourage you. Weeping may endure for a night. Talk to us now. But joy comes in the morning. Let me encourage you to lift your eyes to the hills. For whence come your help? Your help comes from the Lord. Let me encourage you as the church and as an individual and anyone listening, all is not loss. That you are not suffering because you have sinned, because you have no faith, but you are that lump of clay on the potter's wheel. And you and I are being molded into that priceless vessel of honor to give glory for the master. He applies a little pressure and a little tuck there. And there's a pinch here and a poke there. And it doesn't feel good. It's not pleasant at all. But the finished product will be elegant because God is sovereign. God only does what brings pleasure and glory to him. And it isn't our suffering that pleases him, but the gleaming treasure that we potentially will become that thrills the creator. So like Job, we can declare, though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. Paul reminds Rome with the Romans, all things work together for the good, for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. So please, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through, I shall come forth as pure gold. Father, continue to strengthen our hearts because something wonderful is about to happen. I just feel like something good is about to happen. Something wonderful, something great beyond our imagination, beyond what we can ask or think. God is working it out. By and by, by and by, we'll understand it. Father along, we'll, Father along, we'll understand it. So cheer up, my brother. Yes. We'll understand it. By and by. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us stand to our feet. There may be someone today who does not know Christ. As their personal Lord and Savior, there may be someone. God is working it out. God is working it out. God is present. We are never alone. We're never alone. It's time to go to the church is open. God bless you. Amen. God bless you, Sister Michelle.
grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and may the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with you, henceforth now and forever, and the Church of God said in one voice. God bless you. Have a great day.